G'day, I'm Paul. So I love big American pickup trucks and look, you may think that they're the most ridiculous thing in the world, but they tow four and a half tons. They have a decent amount of payload as well and they have a lot of luxury inside. So they may not be for you, but if you are the intended buyer, I really like exactly what these are built for. Now, this is the latest addition to the Australian lineup when it comes to the bigger American trucks. They're all converted to right-hand drive here in Australia. They don't make any of them as factory right-hand drives. So Chevy Silverado, Ram 1500, the new Toyota Tundra, they are all converted here in Australia and uh, this is one of the latest. This is the Lariat long wheelbase. So it's the top spec of Ford's F-150 range here in Australia. It is priced at just under $141,000. So it's a big old chunk of money. If that is too expensive, the entire range kicks off with the XLT at just under 107 grand. So it is a pretty decent spread there and I'm hoping that Ford will bring more different uh, variants of these into the country. Today we're gonna to do a detailed review of this along with some light off-roading. So if you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes that are on the screen. Or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a big old truck. Let's talk about exterior styling. So your optional colors are 700 bucks. There are a few there to choose from. This has recently received an update out of the States. So this is, I guess, the pre-update. That one uh, looks pretty much the same, but ever so slightly different. In terms of what you're getting here with the Lariat, there is a lot of chrome. So along the front here, getting stacks of chrome. Behind here, you've got these active louvers. This uses a 3.5 litre turbocharged V6 petrol engine. It's the EcoBoost engine. Now, this is the only engine that's available in Australia, despite the fact you've got V8s, hybrids, and other um, available drivetrains in the States. This is the only one that we'll be getting for Australia. And I think it's just for simplicity at the moment. Hopefully, they will expand on that in the future and give us a few more options. A lot of chrome down here as well, an actual proper bumper too. Full LED headlights with LED daytime running lights as well. These actually had a lot of work done to them in Australia for, for this to actually be... Uh, available to be on sale in Australia. So they're unique to this vehicle. So um, it's pretty cool to see how much effort actually goes into these to make them compliant for our roads. Around the side here, 20 inch alloy wheels, and you guessed it, a bit more chrome there as well. Uh, it is an all-terrain tire. So we're gonna do a bit of light off-roading later on to see what it's like, but um, this is very much a road truck. This isn't a Raptor built for off-road driving. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Lariat badge on the side here, signifying that this is the top spec for Australia. LED lights over on the side here for the zone lighting package, which comes standard with this, and a camera on the side there for the 360 camera. Proper sidestep there as well. Now the curious thing as well is, in the States on the driver's side, you actually get a keypad here, so you can leave your uh, key inside the vehicle, type a few numbers in and it will unlock the car. So if you're going surfing or something adventurous like that. Uh, but the thing is, I haven't moved it from the passenger side. Well, it is now on the passenger side, which is normally the driver's side in the States. So it should really be over here and I don't know why on a $140,000 car that you're going to so much effort converting, you can't actually move that over to this side as well. But anyway, uh, privacy glass, this is the long wheelbase, which means you get an extra 300 mil of wheelbase. So that makes this just over six meters in length. It is absolutely enormous. And that is before you include the tow bar as well. So come around to the back, I'll show you that. Oh, by the way, side exit exhaust there. Now around the back here, you have full LED tail lights, oh, very nice and fancy, EcoBoost badge down the bottom there, Ford lettering along here with a Ford badge there, more LED here for the zone lighting camera, and you also have this big old thing. So 70 mil ball, because this has a four and a half ton brake towing capacity. Uh, it is what you expect for a vehicle this size, and it gives you that extra latitude when it comes to towing a much larger trailer. You're typically capped out at three and a half ton with most other vehicles on the road before you do a GVM upgrade. So it's good to see that that is um, fitted here. You've also got some trailer plugs here as well, which come standard in the US and they just uh, carry them over. This is a powered tailgate. I'll show you how that works in a second, but you can see here where they got the inspiration for the clamp hooks for the Ranger. So that's all come here from F-150. Press a button there. This can actually be uh, deactivated as a powered tailgate or you can uh, just do it manually. So there's a button inside for that. You've got a ruler here as well for measuring stuff. The interesting thing, which uh, we don't get here in F-150, but is available in the States, is actually a clever system that allows you to visually see how much payload you're adding to the vehicle through your tail lights. So as you add more weight to the vehicle, the tail lights actually light up at the back to tell you when you've reached capacity. 
also shows you inside the cabin. So hopefully they do bring a few more of those features because if you have a look in here as, as an example, um, actually, let me show you this first. So step out the back, similar to the GWM Canon. Uh, this allows you to hop into the vehicle nice and safely. But in the States, this actually has uh, an onboard power bank with up to, here's a little over seven kilowatts of power output. Here, all we have is a 12 volt outlet, which is a little bit chintzy, I reckon. Um, you've got LED lighting in the back here that you can switch on and off using this button. You've got hooks down the side here, up the top there as well. So it is sort of properly kitted out. And then you have a spray in bed liner as well. So let me run you through the capacities because this is something interesting as well. This bed is just under 1700 mil wide or 1285 between the wheel arches. You've got just over 500 mil of depth and it's two meters long, just over two meters long, which is 300 mil shorter than the short wheelbase version. Provides you a uh, payload of 710 kilos, GCM of 7,765 and a GVM of 3,265 kilos. But let me run you through the issue with that. And uh, that payload doesn't include any weight that you're adding to the vehicle when it comes to towing. So if you do actually go down the path of towing four and a half tons with this, you're adding 450 kilos typically to the tow ball. So that's a weight that is added down there and is subtracted from your payload. Once you subtract that, you only have a little under 300 kilos worth of payload to work with. That doesn't include your passengers. So stick a couple of passengers in, you only have a small amount left. So it is worth keeping in mind that if you are looking at one of these and you do want to go to town on towing and all that sort of stuff, that you need to have a look at your capacities because it is quite easy to go over and uh, you're going to land yourself in trouble by driving an illegal vehicle. So uh, even though the capacities sound good, in theory, they're not actually that good once you uh, start looking at all the numbers. And it's kind of the same in all of the vehicles that are in this segment here in Australia. So let me know what you reckon. Big old pickup truck like this. Do you think we should have more of them on our roads? What else do you want to see come to Australia? Let me know in the comments section below. So we are inside the F-150. Sean, you are a long, long way away from me. Uh, that is because this thing is mammoth inside the cabin. Uh, the Lariat, so it isn't the top spec in the F-150 range, but it is still pretty well equipped. Uh, ahead of the driver, you've got a big display. You've got this big infotainment screen in the center here. And it is worth pointing out as well that this whole thing has been engineered for right-hand drive, which means this steering wheel is over here when the car's delivered. They switch it over to here. There's no belt driven system, you know, some clunky thing behind the dashboard there. It's all done properly uh, under the bonnet. The only thing worth pointing out is that they use the uh, electric steering assistance motor from the Ranger. So it is obviously a lighter vehicle, but uh, in Raptor trim, it is similar in size here to the Lariat. So I'll be interested to see when we go for a drive, how that feels in terms of steering feel. Uh, it is sort of fairly, uh, sort of rugged around here. I mean, there are some soft touch finishes, uh, like over here, that's sort of fairly soft, soft on the doors as well, but sort of nothing too crazy. I forgot to mention what the key looks like. So <laughs> you've got unlock, lock, uh, remote start function, uh, double tap there, drops that power tailgate, panic as well, and then forward on the back. It's a proximity sensing key, so you can leave that in your pocket. Got a push button start over here. Now, how soft are our surfaces? Well, we've got our durometer, tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you do want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, look at the link in the description. Now, build quality. So I am hearing this sort of making rattling sounds, or not rattling sounds, but just squeaking sounds as I lean on it. Uh, but outside of that, the rest of this looks sort of pretty decent and uh, well put together. Yeah, you can see that it's a little bit wonky there. Um, actually, the whole purpose of this table is um, you can fold the gear stick out of the way and then use it as a workbench. So uh, perhaps it has a bit of flex in it for that purpose, but um, anyway. And this is what the door slam sounds like. Now let's talk infotainment. Um, and one thing that Sean pointed out that once you see, you can't unsee, thank you for that, is that this whole cluster is sort of tilted that way because if you can imagine the driver's seat over here, you'd want it sort of facing the driver, but yeah kind of affects, doesn't really affect the way, you know, you see the screen when you're sitting here, but once you do see the angle that it's on, it is something that you can't unsee. So uh, that looks like it would have been a massive change in terms of uh, adjusting that. So not the end of the world, but um, just something there. So 12 inch infotainment screen there, it comes with 
uh, Ford Sync infotainment system. It is a different system to what you see in the Ranger. So Ranger is a vertical stack, whereas this one sort of sits across like that. Uh, but it's all pretty straightforward to use. The left-hand side is an adjustable menu where you can sort of move between different sections that you want to have on display. Then the right-hand side, you control here on the bottom depending on uh, what you want to have uh, displayed there as well. It's also quite interesting. You've got uh, apps that you can stick in here and also uh, some features as well. So some handy stuff there for towing, which I'll run you through a little bit later on. Uh, zone lighting as well. Comes with uh, AM, FM and DAB digital radio, which is cool to see. And that's all put through an 18 speaker Bang & Olufsen branded sound system. That's a really good sound system. So uh, pretty nice to see that you can sit inside this and, and just be pumping out some hits, which is good. Uh, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Apple CarPlay is wireless. So even though you have that left section, you can actually make it a full screen setup by pressing that. So that takes up that entire screen now. Nice and quick and easy to use as well. This is what Android Auto looks like. So again, it starts like that, but you can just go to full screen by clicking this little button here. And that takes up the entire screen there, which looks uh, much nicer. So very good. Uh, head of the driver, another 12 inch display. Uh, this has a level of configuration available as well. So you can change what you're seeing there on the screen by diving through the menus and fiddling with all that stuff as well. Now let's talk about safety tech. So you have autonomous emergency braking. You've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror. You've got a blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. You have uh, the blind spot monitor also takes into account the trailer length. So you just input how long the trailer is and it will also sort that out for you. You have rear cross traffic alert. You've got trailer pro assistance. So once this is switched on, you can actually reverse your trailer or basically steer the trailer using this control. It'll basically take control of the steering for you and place the trailer where it needs to go. So we'll have a play with that next year when we do a, a bigger comparison with these American trucks. Uh, you have an integrated uh, trailer brake controller as well for that. Uh, you've got front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. Oh, in addition to that, radar cruise control and a self-steering assistant as well. I'll show you what the camera looks like. Just hit this button up the top there. So, yeah, quality is okay. That's sort of looking out the front there. It's a bit sort of... Uh, uh, quality doesn't look all that amazing, uh, but you can then change your views. And when you go to the super size view, it's just uh, more of the same there. Uh, there's another sort of super wide angle view. You've got a tow bar view as well, and then a reverse camera view as well. So that's actually not too bad. We can see what's on our suitcase there. Uh, so not, not a bad setup. And this is what the horn sounds like. Now let's talk about your practicality and we'll start off with connectivity. So you've got a USB-C, USB-A, behind here you've got another USB-C and a, a 12 volt outlet got a wireless phone charger down here as well what about your coffee cup so here's my comically small coffee cup in my comically large car ute truck whatever you want to call it fits in nicely there you've got some teeth in there as well this is I guess an American small size coffee fits in there as well without any dramas let's see if our big bottle fits inside the door surely it does yes plenty of storage there inside the door other storage so you've got this whole sort of section down there that closes as well in addition to that you've got this enormous center console here with a little coin tray and then another usb a and c outlet in there too so a bit of space there you've got one glove box down here which is sort of reasonably sized one more up the top here and well almost finally you've got a sunglasses holder just there and then a little storage nook up the top there as well now moving on to comfort you've got dual zone automatic climate control you've got heated and cooled seats here for the front row uh, steering adjustment is electric so you've got both uh, reach and tilt adjustment you can also move your pedals as well reminds me of the ba falcon Sort of just shift them up and down as required. Electric seat adjustment too, so you can go forwards and backwards. Your backrest can go forwards and backwards. Got lumbar adjustment, you can lift the front of the seat, the back of the seat, electric passenger adjustment as well. Memory for the driver as well. On our reach test, uh, yeah, all of this stuff is sort of fairly easy to reach while you're driving. Now, second row. Let me show you this, I reckon this is really cool. So you can lift this and this out of the way. And then I love this accessory here. So Pop that up and you've got a spot there to store your things without any dramas. I love that the floor is totally flat as well, which is uh, very impressive to see. Sean, do you want to grab that seat for me? 
You can then also drop the back of these seats as well. So it gives you a little bit of storage behind there, access to your jack and that kind of thing as well. Let me hop on in, grab that door handle. All right, look at this. They have uh, just enough knee room here. <laughs> Toe room's great, uh, headroom isn't too bad. Um, you've got uh, all sorts of storage around the place here. You've got heated seats for the outboard seats, a 12 volt outlet, USB-C and A charging, your own air vents, another set of cup holders there, map pocket, uh, center armrest here with two cup holders too. I mean, this is, this is living the dream here, so uh, very impressed with that. Now, windows, they go totally down, that is manual down, all the way down, very nice. So we've just hit the road in the F-150. Look, immediately before I even run you through the engine specs and stuff, I've got to tell you, this rides extremely well. It is really surprising to me, given the size of this vehicle, and if you have a look at other dual cab utes that we sell in Australia, none of them actually ride this well, and this is still a least run setup. So I think it does show you that um, you know, they've put a lot of effort into this uh, to make this a comfortable uh, sort of everyday vehicle and, and that has definitely been achieved. Now powering the entire F-150 range in Australia is a 3.5 litre turbocharged V6 petrol engine. It's the EcoBoost engine. It's like a bigger version of the engine you're going to find in the Ford Ranger Raptor. It makes 298 kilowatts of power and just under 680 newton metres of torque. So it is a fair old slab. That's all made into a 10 speed automatic transmission. So I do like down here that you can see exactly which sort of uh, gear the car's in constantly. Um, how does all that feel behind the wheel? So let's give this a little punch. A little bit laggy there on the gearbox, but yeah, it has got some absolute mumbo. So it is, uh, I think this is gonna be fun when we go for a bit of a punt, despite this being over six meters in length. So uh, good engine there. And then they plumb what sounds like fake sound into the cabin because it sounds like it has a sort of V8 note to it. It uh, definitely doesn't sound anything like that normally. So um, yeah, it's just a standard sort of thing to make it sound more impressive. Now you don't have paddle shifters to manually control gear shifts. Instead you use these buttons here on the gear stick, which I don't love because you're sort of having to awkwardly come back here to do stuff. It'd just be much nicer to have, similar to what they have in the Ram 1500, just buttons on the steering wheel that lets you manually row through the gears. And you've got to keep in mind that that's actually quite useful for things like towing. So um, having those buttons easily accessible would be a much better option. So I mentioned earlier that it has the steering uh, motor out of a Ranger. But I've got to say, it actually works in its favor. I've driven F-150 in the States before and steering was always just a little bit vague about center, but here it actually feels really nice and decent. So. We've done a good job here with the steering calibration. Let's talk about fuel economy. So Ford, they reckon this is gonna use uh, under 13 litres per 100 Ks. Well, that's not bad. We're averaging 13.3, but I'm really impressed with that for such a big vehicle. Gotta keep in mind this weighs like two and a half tonnes. The fact that it's using that much fuel is pretty awesome. I think that's slightly more than what I'm getting out of my Raptor. So that tells you everything you need to know. Uh, it's a 136 litre fuel tank and it also runs on 91 RON as well, which is great. If you do want to see the performance benefits of using a higher octane fuel as well, we've actually shot a video on this. You can click up there to watch that. What about our sine waves? So let's crank the speed up to 130. We were here recently with Silverado, uh, Ram 1500 as well. And all of those were just a little bit sketchy over this stuff. So let's see what F-150 is like at 130. Uh, it's a maximum speed limit in Australia. It's the type of road you're gonna find out in the country. So there's 130, holy dooly. <laughs> I think we left the ground there. Wow, all right, that is fairly bouncy. So that explains why the ride is so nice in and around the city because um, it has been totally softened out. Uh, look, it's not the end of the world. This is built for comfort, but yeah, do keep in mind if you are driving out in the country and you're unladen, it is going to be very bouncy as it sort of uh, gets a bit of speed along. Okay, bouncy road time. So 90 k's an hour is what we do here. Gives us a bit of an idea of what the ride is like across a very corrugated road. We've got our high frequency sine waves here that are gonna shake the living daylights out of this too. Oh, there it is. <laughs> So I guess that is a good test of um, 
all of this re-engineering work they've done here, everything is still in one piece after we just shook the living daylights out of it. <laughs> now let's talk drive modes. So you've got this sort of selector here, um, and it is worth pointing out as well that you can drive in two-wheel drive high range and four-wheel drive auto uh, as well. You can't on the base XLT, but you can here on the Lariat. Uh, drive modes, you have a stack of them there. Normal, tow, haul, eco, sport, and then some off-road modes that will go through and we go off-road driving. So let's just switch this into 4A. Let's go for a punt around the track. Again, I know most people aren't going to drive like this, but it's good to have a reference point against Silverado and Ram 1500 as well. Yeah, look, it feels, uh, feels big, but I'm liking the sound that's coming out of this. This is that artificial sound I think we're getting. <laughs> it is hauling ass. Wow. This is absolutely moving. So for such a big vehicle, it really is getting along nicely. That engine has a lot of punch. Brakes feel really confident as well. Never thought I'd be saying this about a long wheelbase version of the F-150, but this is actually really good. And you cannot notice that this was a vehicle that was engineered uh, for right-hand drive and wasn't originally right-hand drive. Because it's um, sticking to the road really nicely. I've got plenty of steering feel. It just feels like this is originally how it actually came from the factory. So here's our back straight. Let's get stuck into it here. Wow, this has got some absolute legs. Very nice. Good job, Ford. Very impressed with that. Now, let's talk about road noise. Um, again, this is another point that I'm pretty surprised with. It is really quiet inside the cabin on the freeway. You're not really getting a great deal of wind noise from the wing mirrors, and you're also not really getting a great deal of tyre noise as well. So we've put it up against our calibrated sound meter. This is how it went. You can compare the results to the other big trucks we've driven as well just by following the link in the description below. Okay, time to test these semi-autonomous systems here. So we do this at 70 k's an hour on our bowl. Use the three outer lanes just to see how well it will hold its line around a bend. So right, there we go, 70 k's an hour. And then switch this on as well. Okay, so there you go. That's saying that the steering is now in control of the vehicle. So in our first lane here, it's doing a pretty good job of keeping that central. We'll jump over to the next lane. All right, wait for that to lock in. There it is. And it's not too bad. Sort of. Yeah, it has sort of moved itself back into the centre there, which is good. All right, let's try the outer lane now. Okay, wait for that steering wheel to come up. Okay, there it is. Slowly let go of the wheel. Yeah, it's not liking that. We've just left that lane. So, yeah, it's kind of what I experienced on the drive here as well. It's um, yeah, it'll hold the lane enough, but uh, sometimes it sort of doesn't. I also found that as well while I was driving. The indicator is still on. It sort of gets stuck sometimes. So, yeah, there's just this stalk. Maybe during that conversion process isn't really done that well. But yeah, I had that a few times where it just got stuck on and I had to manually switch it off, even though the stalk wasn't pulled all the way down. So time to do a bit of performance testing. Uh, let me tell you about Help Me Car Expert first. If you go to Google and type in Help Me Car Expert, uh, it'll take you to our website. Uh, we're a big company. We've got a stack of great tools on the website there to help you choose your next new car. Then we can connect you with one of our vetted dealers as well. Um, okay, dokie. Okay. So I'm going to switch this over to uh, sport mode. When it's in sport mode, I'm going to try a couple of things here. So we're going to go all the way through to 120 k's an hour and I'm gonna try both 4A and also 2H as well. So two wheel drive high range. I'll switch traction control off as well just to see how it goes off the line here. And we will see what kind of performance times we get. Here we go, just build up a bit of boost. Nice, all right. So there's 100. There's 120. 
Okie dokie, let's have a little look and see how we went here. So, 0 to 100, 6.45 seconds, nice. 80 to 120, 4.01 seconds, so some good times there. Um, let's go back, because what I'll do now is try it in four-wheel drive auto and see if it's any quicker there. Okay, let's try that once more. This time we're in 4A, traction off again. Here we go, a little bit of boost. So much torque, I love it. Okay, there's 100. And there's 120. Nice. Okie dokie. Let's have a look at how that went. 6.04 seconds. So wiped about 0.4 off that in 4A. 80 to 120, 4.1. So slightly slower. That is bloody impressive. Um, all right, let's head back and do a stop from 100 k's an hour. Okay, we'll get our speed up to 100. And we'll jam the anchors down. All right, here we go. So, uh, it was a little bit damp this morning, so the road has sort of dried out, but it's still a tiny bit wet. Uh, okay, so 100 to zero, 3.22 seconds, 44.12 metres. That is a really impressive stopping time for a vehicle this size. Um, yeah, so if you do want to compare this to other vehicles that we've tested before, look at the link in the description below and, and see how it went. And now, how quick will it go in reverse? Let's have a little look here, Let's see how we go. Alright, so 55 kilometres an hour, not a bad effort. Okay, so it is time to do a little bit of light off-roading. Um, Run you through the specs first. So I mentioned when we were doing our on-road driving that it is it can be driven as a two-wheel drive uh, high range or it can be driven in four-wheel drive automatic. You do also have four-wheel drive high range, four-wheel drive low range and a rear diff lock as well. Rear diff lock works in two-wheel drive as well. And then you've got a set of off-road modes uh, along with the hill descent control as well that I'll run you through shortly. Now, um, what about your actual specs? So 24 degree approach angle, that's the angle of the face you can approach without hitting the front of the car. Uh, Departure angle is 26.3 degrees and weighting depth is 600 millimetres. If you do want to get a better understanding of why you can't run vehicles like this in full drive high range on sealed surfaces, click up here to watch a video that we shot before that explains it all. Uh, I'm also going to stick this screen ahead of me into uh, off-road mode. So, crack that open. So, we're going to kick off in two-wheel drive high range. I know this sounds a bit silly, but... Uh, this is just to see what traction control is like. And let me just see if there are any full drive modes here for gravel driving. So slippery, deep snow sand, mud ruts. So nothing there. I'll just leave it in normal for the moment. And then we'll head over to our offset mogul. Now this basically gets the car set up in a condition where the rear wheel is off the ground. Now the rear driver's side wheel. And then it forces the traction control to sort itself out. So it's around there. I'm just going to lean on the throttle now. And we'll let the traction control do its thing. Okay, so hard throttle. Go a little harder on the throttle. I can feel the traction control biting. Sort of giving us a little shunt as it moves along. Nice. All right. That is working as intended. Very good. Okay, so we will... Hop out of this and we will go back and try four-wheel drive high range. Okay, so whack this into four-wheel drive high range just by hitting that. It says four-wheel drive shift in progress. Okay, that's active. So same story again. We're going to have front left off the ground this time and the rear right with limited traction. So we'll just get this set up first. So it's going to be... Yeah. <laughs> The wheelbase here kind of just makes this a little bit easy. Uh, so I'm just going to lean on the throttle. We'll see what happens. But this should just walk out of this in theory. Because we've got front left and rear right without traction. Oh, it is struggling a little here. I'm leaning on the throttle now. I'll go a little harder on the throttle. I can hear traction control working though. There it is. So that's getting us over that little crest there. So 
all pretty straightforward. Keep in mind, this isn't really built for off-road driving, so we are just doing a bit of light off-roading here to see how it works. Um, all right, let's head over to our hill. We can test out low range. Okay, so we've got our little hill here. I um, should also mention as well, ground clearance of 225 mils, so not too bad, um, not sort of amazing either. So low range, pop it into neutral, press 4L. Okay, that is switching over now. There we go, okay, that is switched. It has uh, turned stability control off as well. Uh, let's just see if we do have access to any other modes here. Deep snow sand, mud ruts. Let's just try mud ruts. I know it's sort of not really muddy. And what we'll also do, I'm going to lock the rear diff as well. Okay, so we'll just go up here with gradual throttle. I'm also going to come back here and do another one where I come to a stop and then try and apply the throttle. Yeah, it is um, walking up here without any dramas at all. Look at that. Piece of cake. Very nice. Very nice. All right, got our little mud bog. We'll get through here. Doesn't actually look like there is hill descent control. So what I'll do is just manually uh, change gears here and lock it down into first gear. I've got the camera on as well, just so we can see over the edge. Or bottoming out there. Ramp over angle isn't great here because it is so long. That's such a big wheelbase. But yeah, once you've locked that, um, into first gear it's kind of not too much of an issue but yeah you're probably not going to be doing any serious off-roading here because uh, ultimately you're going to be limited by the amount of uh, ramp over you have there for such a long wheelbase vehicle so do keep that in mind if you do want to do any off-roading the short wheelbase is probably going to be the better option okay take two on the hill uh, this time what i'll do is come to a stop as i climb and we'll just see how it goes with restarting I'll let the rear wheels drop into that run just there. I'll come to a stop and just roll onto the throttle. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Not too bad at all. Finally, let's head over to our rocks. We do a river crossing today, but our river is bone dry, unfortunately. Okay, so 225 mil of ground clearance. Let's see how this fares. I've just left it in low range and just riding the brake with the throttle. Let's see how it goes across this stuff. It is so nice and comfortable. <laughs> yeah, nice, very nice and soft over this. No dramas at all. A little touch down there. It is such a long wheelbase, so. A lot of this stuff that um, normal dual cab utes just sort of uh, sail over this has a varying experience, sometimes better, sometimes worse, simply because of the uh, wheelbase that you're dealing with. So, um, but yeah, look, uh, gotta tell you, this really is a versatile vehicle and to think that you can do this sort of light off-roading without any dramas at all, I think just tells you how capable this is as an off-road vehicle in base trim. Can't wait till they bring a Raptor here and the Raptor R, I mean, if they bring that here, I'm definitely buying one uh, because that would be absolutely unreal. So the Ford F-150, what do we reckon? It is heating up here in Australia when it comes to these big trucks. I can't wait to drive the Toyota Tundra. Well, that's if they let us because they're all on lease to customers and they've been told not to give them to media, but I'll see if I can get my hands on one. Next year as well, I want to do a big comparison between all of these big trucks as well and load them up to their capacity and see which one is the way to go. Tell you what though, this is fantastic. I mean, the F-150 has always been the go-to choice when it comes to these things. But I think what they've done here is really just given it all of the tech and all of the features that it needs, and it is incredibly comfortable to drive. And when you do get up it, it is surprisingly fun to drive as well. So it ticks all of those boxes. In terms of the negatives, look, it really is hard to pinpoint anything. I think just a couple of those minor things, like that sort of center console lid that was shaking a little bit and squeaking, uh, the screen tilting away from the driver, they're kind of things that they should look at and try and get sorted. And I do hope they extend the range with other variants such as the Raptor R. I wanna see that here in Australia. So let me know in the comment section below, have you ordered one of these? What has it been like? Are you happy with the service that you're getting? I'm keen to hear your feedback. If you did enjoy this review, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. 
And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon as well. But until next time, see you later.